Here's how you can create awesome greenery just like this in a few minutes in Blender. Now this will be using a free add-on which I will link in the description below. And let's get on with the tutorial. Here's how to install the G-Scatter add-on. So you're gonna wanna click on the first link in the description below and you'll be prompted to this website. Over here, click on download for free in the bottom part of the website and click on it. Once you've done that, you will be prompted to a login or sign up page and just login or sign up using your preferred method. Once you've done that, you'll be prompted to this page where it has around four links. Now this depends on the version of Blender you're using. So in my case, I'm using Blender 3.2, so I'm going to go with Gscatcher 0.7.0. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go ahead and select the save location, just like this. And now to actually install the add-on into Blender, we're going to click on Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and click on install and you're going to select the file location. Once you've done that, you can search it up here or you might just be prompted to the add-on itself. But if it didn't, you can search up Gscatter and it will be here. And all you're going to want to do is click on the enable button. Okay, once you've installed the add-on, all you're going to do is go ahead and delete everything there is. And we're going to first click on N to open up the menu. Now you'd see here that there's a new tab and there will be just the usual stuff, the tool view, create and other stuff. But at the end you will see a new tab called the G-Scatter and this is where your, the add-on is going to be used. But before we do that we need to create an emitter object so let's use a plane, shift A, mesh, plane, S, 8, to scale it up by 8 times. Tab, right click, subdivide, open up the subdivision panel and make the number of cuts a lot higher so just 30. The reason we need to subdivide it is so to give the add-on vertices and just geometry in general to scatter the objects around. Once we've done that, we can choose the object that we need to scatter. Now, I'll tell you how to scatter real life plant assets later on in the tutorial. For now, let's use, I don't know, a monkey head, mesh monkey, and we'll just move it out of the way. With that, now you're going to click on the plane, select the eyedropper tool in the add-on and select the plane. Now that will be acting as our emitter. That's where the objects are going to be emitted onto. Now, since we want to emit the monkey head and scatter the monkey head, what we're going to do is click on the monkey head, make sure it's highlighted in orange, yellow, whatever color that is, and we're going to click on the plus button. And as you can see, it's well scattered the monkey head across the plane. Now, these aren't really the high poly version of the monkey heads. As you can see, they're very simplified in terms of the amount of polygons it has. And to fix that, we're going to open up the tab just ever so slightly. And as you can see, there's a icon over there, which, called, which is called mute, and you're just going to click that. The reason it usually starts off with a low poly version of the original object is because when you're in the viewport and you're scattering sometimes hundreds or even thousands of objects, your computer will start to struggle. So it basically simplifies the amount of polygons it has during the viewport. Now over here in the effects layer tab, you can see that there's a bunch of tabs, distribution, scale, rotation, and geometry. In the distribution, if you can't tell by the name, it's basically how the object is going to be scattered around the plane. Now over here, you've gotten the viewport density, which is how dense it is going to be during the viewport, and the render density, which is how dense it's going to be during the render. As you can see, the viewport density kind of just changes how dense the object is. Now over here in the influence tab, this is kind of like a amount slider, and if you slide it down, it will change the amount of monkey heads or the object that you're scattering on to the plane and if you move it up there's going to be more of the object then let's go on to the scale tab the scale tab is basically the scale of the scattered object as you can see the C just changes kind of like different maps on where the objects are going to be and over here in the actual scale tab you've gotten the main scale which changes the average scale of all the objects itself and with the XYZ tab these are basically the scale of each object on different axes. This is the x axis, this is the y axis, and this is the z axis, just like that. Then in this tab you've gotten the rotation, 
Now, this is the randomized rotation, so the it, it's basically like the rotation of the object, but randomized on each object. As you can see, if you change the X position, it's changing the X rotation on all the objects, except they're not rotating on the X, X axis in the same way as each other, just like that. And as you can see, that is the Y and that is the Z rotation. Then over here, we've gotten the actual average rotation of the objects X. As you can see, it rotates it in the same way, unlike the top tab, which rotates it in a random way. And the same for the Y axis and the Z axis. And at last, we got the geometry tab, which we don't have to worry about too much. Now let's go ahead and delete the Suzanne monkey head out of the scatter object. And let's actually start adding plants. Now, luckily, you don't have to create the plants itself because Grassworld the creator of this node has created a library just for us. So over here, if you see this book kind of looking icon, click on it. And as you can see, we've already gotten super realistic looking presets of a few plants. Obviously, if you get the paid version, you're going to get a lot more assets, which are going to be more high poly and stuff. But this is good enough. You're going to want to click on the tab above and all you're going to do is click scatter selected and OK at the bottom. And as you can see, we've gotten the low poly version scattered all over. Remember, if you don't want it to be low poly in the viewport, you can click on the mute button over here. And as you can see, we've gotten the plants. Now, obviously, this is in the viewport, so it's not going to look realistic. But I can guarantee you, once you render it out with the correct lighting and all, it will look super photo realistic. And the cool thing about this add-on is that you can't only scatter a single plant you can actually add more stuff onto there for example if you click on the library button looking kind of weird icon you can, in fact you can add the plantain flowers and scatter the selected okay you've got the low poly version again so you can click on the mute button and you're getting the plants as well now just make sure to like actually add the texture to the floor because unfortunately the G scatter add-on doesn't really give a floor texture to it such as I don't know scattered leaves as a texture but that's easy just get a image texture out of any website and just slap it right onto the plane and now make sure that you don't just add the objects and just leave it like that as you can see over here make it unique go ahead into the distribution scale rotation settings and just mess with them however you like okay the reason i choose this add-on over just using a particle system is because a particle system might give you a lot more freedom but it also is a lot more fiddly and it doesn't really include assets just like this now that was it for today's tutorial i hope you learned something new make sure you hit that subscribe button like button and the notification button and I'll see you in the next one.